friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Mel and today I have a weekly reading vlog. It's gonna be a super exciting one. I have a lot of exciting books and like items to show you before we dive in and I am just super excited for this week because I'm gonna be reading some of my most anticipated releases of the year like Hearts Over Volume 4, The Wax in the Woods. I am gonna be finishing some patron buddy reads but overall I am just super excited for this week because there's a lot of exciting stuff just you know coming in the mail, has already come in the mail. So let us just relish in these vibes because absolutely everything. Okay, so I am currently reading A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth and this is our book club pick for Lou Phantasma. I, every time I say it, no, I just have to say it like that because when we looked it up on Google Translate, like Liv and I were live, we looked for it and it basically says Lou Phantasma. So that's how we say it now. So this is the book club that I run on Patreon with Liv. I am 105 pages into this one and I really do want to finish it this week. I am setting the goal of finishing this by Thursday, so we will see if that happens also. This is kind of a moment. What happens if I take a picture? with this sweater and this. Anyways, I digress. What I'm trying to say is I am really, really enjoying this. I really... Here's the thing. Whenever I've read face stories before, they've been very face-centric, but in a way that romanticizes Faye. And Faye are not meant to be romantic. They are not nice creatures. They are very ruthless and they are always after stuff to benefit themselves. And so as far as the lore goes, the romanticization... Romanticization? I, is that a word? You know what I'm trying to say of the fae is not the norm with the lore and so in this one I really like the fact that they're scheming and that they're doing their own twisted things behind the scenes that by the end it feels like everything should and will come together and there's a lot of world building in this one which I am also really enjoying. For some people it might feel info dumpy but honestly I am having a really great time with this so I am gonna briefly be mentioning this in this vlog because obviously this is you know a reading plan for the week as I move along and then three exciting things that go here. Oh my god. Okay, so the first one, let me show you guys now. Should I show you like the good thing first or like the good thing last? The first thing that got here finally, it took forever to get here, is Heartstopper Volume 4, which I am so excited to read Heartstopper Volume 4. I am going to be reading this today. Again, I'm going to include a little bit of this in this vlog, but mostly it's going to be in my romance reading vlog, which is going to be a completely separate thing. And then I, of course, had to get Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Yumide, and this one is actually my Patreon book club pick for July. Incredibly excited about to actually be able to chat with people about this and I actually got the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition which apparently has like a like a prequel segment chapter moment all of the above and I am just so excited for this this is one of my most anticipated releases of the year it's like Gossip Girl meets Get Out and there's like a pretty little liar situation with like a stalker named Aces is that not what I love or is that not what I love then I've got the box in the woods so for context today is the seven technically not out yet I believe this vlog is going of the day this is released. I told you guys on my TBR that I am a part of the book tour for The Box in the Woods, so Harper and Collins kindly sent this my way. So thank you so much to Harper and Collins for sending this. And this is also one of my most anticipated releases of this year. I am gonna be reading this, hopefully starting tomorrow. I am just so excited, I cannot wait. And then before we actually get into the reading vlog, I do have a very exciting unboxing. So Alcrate Jr. recently reached out to me to see if I wanted to be a part of their rep team. And of course I had to say yes because I have been branching more into middle grade and I love book boxes and I already work with Alcrate so this just seems like the perfect thing to receive. I have got my first Alcrate Junior. I believe this is for the month of May if I'm not mistaken so I'm not that behind. It's just the start of June so I will be unboxing this with you guys today. I have no idea what to expect with this. Oh my god it's blue! Okay this actually is like super exciting. Oh my god okay we've got the little pamphlet moment and this says Sagas and Swords so it is May 2021. I'm not, I forgot, this is the spoiler sheet. I'm not gonna open this, though I do doubt in comparison to other book boxes like Illumicrate and Alcrate, I doubt that I'll be able to guess what's in a junior box. I am touching this. There's gonna be fluff everywhere. I've just, oh, ooh, oh, these are sticky notes. Look, anything that I can put in like my journal or that I can put in binder or anything, I absolutely, it's stationary, you guys. Who doesn't love stationary? And I have just been loving journaling. You guys know this this year. So this is absolutely perfect for like decoration. I absolutely love this. Okay, I'm touching something. What is, th <gasps> is this a book sleeve? Oh my God, wait, is this a, this is totally a book 
sleeve. I am going to cry. This is my first book sleeve, you guys. It's definitely only fits like the smaller hardcovers, which is like standard because since middle grade, like the books are made smaller, it makes sense. We've got this, which I think is the, oh, what is? <gasps> Alcray Jr. is coming for my heart. Wait, I freaking love this. This is a magnetic bookmark. This is Crafted Band Magnetic Bookmark. I don't own any magnetic bookmarks, but I have seen these everywhere. And the cool thing about Alcray Jr. too is that if you use my code which also I have a code it's like I, I I feel like so honored I don't know why but like I I do feel honored you can use the code Melanie 15 to get 15% off your first new subscription which is pretty freaking cool wait what is this wait is this like a tiny this is a tiny book let me show you guys this so this is basically like a manual on like how to be a viking this is so freaking cool like obviously i'm not gonna make any use out of this but i am sure i could find somebody who does and the june alcrate theme is wondrous worlds of course mel vikings and then there's the little er everything says viking how did i not catch that like we have two cutouts what it's what i'm guessing these are and these are Thor and Loki. So I'm guessing you cut these out and you build them and then they're little figures that you can put on like the bookshelf or as decor in any sort of table surface. Okay, so the book is The Last Shadow Warrior by Sam Subedi. Subedi? I hope so. And this is obviously the Alcrate Jr. exclusive edition. These illustrations for the cover, wow. Just wow is all I have to say. It's signed by the author, which is pretty cool. An Ancient Enemy a deadly quest and she thought sixth grade math was hard 12 year old abby beckett is proud to come from a long line of elite viking warriors known as the acer it's her life's goal to hunt the monsters called grendels just like her mother did before she died there's just one small problem no grendel has been seen in centuries and the viking elders want to disband the acer forever after a mysterious attack on her home abby is forced to take refuge at vale hall a secret field school in minnesota where nothing is quite as it seems when she tries to alert the elders that a Grendel is after her, they accuse her of making up stories for attention and claim her mother did the same. Desperate to protect her family and clear her mother's name, Abby goes on a dangerous quest to discover the truth. But with time running out, she quickly realizes that someone at the school is trying to stop Abby's progress and destroy the Acer for good. I have chills all over my body just from reading that synopsis. This genuinely sounds so freaking good. You guys, I don't think I've ever been this excited for a book box. Like, Alcrae Jr., you slayed it. And yes, that was generally so cool. And yeah, I'm just gonna start out the reading vlog here. Let us just go through our day. Let's just start giving them reading updates. And yeah, I'm excited. Let's go. on the bed. Hello everyone. Welcome to my living room. Hello. I just got a new bookshelf in the mail. So I'm going to be building this. I, I don't know what part of the vlog this is going to go in, but I do need to build this bookshelf. I need to reorganize the shelves. It's just a mess. It's overflowing. We've been new, nothing new. And so I really need to do that. Welcome to my channel and the plier revival. If you've been here for a while, you'd know that last time I didn't have a hammer and nothing has changed. I'm going to build it with a plier. <laughs> Welcome to the Handyman Show. Let's get started with the building. And the bookshelves are here. So hold up, let me show you guys. Uh, the whole setup is here. So we've got one, two, and three. And now we gotta figure out what to do with this makeup thingy. Don't ignore that. But I wanna know if I can, if I push them all the way here if it'll fit in that corner again. All right, so I have managed to put the third shelf in and it's gonna look super cool when I film. So now it's like a full wall, but I will try and do something completely different, something that looks good. So I will try my hardest, I don't have the picture right here, but I will try my hardest to not make it the same so that it's something 
maybe a little bit more interesting. Okay, y'all, so I switched outfits because it's super cold, but I also don't want to turn off the AC because I know I will literally sweat my butt off if I do. However, I haven't really updated you with how it's going. This is how it's looking. Welcome. So I realized that I am actually going to have too much free space because honestly, I just had like <laughs> five books to fit into the bookshelf that I didn't know where to put. And now I have all this space and I really don't know what to do. Granted, I have like hundreds of books like lying on the floor that I still need to figure out where to put. I have to figure out how to kind of eat up space. I did a little shrine <laughs> for Strange the Dreamer. I also did a little shrine for Wicked Fox. It earned it. It deserves it. And then I also, again, to kind of minimize, I just put these books sideways with a little bit of decor on both ends. I think that's going to look really beautiful when I film. That's kind of the update that I have for you guys right now. And I'm just going to keep on going, see where I go to. because I didn't update yesterday. In fact, all of yesterday, I was just editing stuff for Patreon. I literally edited three videos, scheduled them all. It was a time I felt like I was gonna rot in my living room chair, but it was a great time. I did get to get, I did get to get. I did leave a lot of stuff ready and I was hyper productive yesterday, which was a great time. So I did sit down last night to read a little bit. Didn't get too far into the box in the woods. But today though, I have made significant progress. I am on page 100. This is fan freaking tastic you guys i and think i just don't want to get too ahead of myself right now but i was talking to julissa earlier and i was like girl i think this might be like the best really deepest book out of all of them you start out this book and it's like instantly literally instantly like i know what you did last summer it starts exactly like the movie and i was like let me just make sure that i am correct so i watched the movie last night because it had been a hot minute i am more of like a scream girl you know that's i enjoy that more but i did watch the movie last night just to make sure that i wasn't crazy it starts out so similar to i know what you did last summer and this 
this is very gory in comparison to what we saw in the previous books. Stevie is going out to this camp to investigate and it's instantly like this victim had 21 stab wounds and it was very gory and you can see like literally the innards out. It's just, it's very descriptive, it's very gory and it's very different to what we saw on the first, like the main trilogy because the main trilogy, a lot of it happens like behind closed doors so that you can never really see like the gore and like the nasty side of it. But this one though, this one tells you stuff exactly as it is and like even Stevie's mentality going into this one you can tell she's more mature she's more seasoned and you can tell that she's very frustrated in where she's at right now because obviously she was like deemed I you know kind of like a celebrity when she was in Ellingham because she solved the mystery and like everybody knew her and like she was very involved and she was in every newspaper and now that high having written off it's like she's no longer any of those things she's just like the kid that solved the mystery now she has a lot to prove to like the people that she's not like a fluke but also to like herself to prove herself that she can do it again and that there's more mysteries to solve and she's still with David so there's that. I'm kind of digging Stevie and David in this book though. Like it's very minimal, but it's better. Maybe it's because he's actually not there and they're just talking on the phone. That's, you know, makes it a little bit better to me. But I am enjoying this so freaking much. It's very slasher, you guys. It's like very, again, I know what you did last summer slash Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees vibes. It's very that. And the way that she has even brought up like the Manson family. It's been a really cool, like true crime lovers will love this book because I feel like this feels a lot more true crime than the first one did. The first one, not the first one, the, like the main trilogy felt more like dark academic slash mystery to me. This one feels more like horror-y slash thriller-y like slasher. It has very different beats. So I am just enjoying every single minute of this one. I am just relishing in all of the vibes. I think after I finish this one, I'm gonna go into Yolk. So it's gonna be a vlog full of like 2021 releases because also a dark and hollow star. Wait, no, was that last year? Was that this year. No thoughts had empty. But yes, I'm gonna, I think my plans for the week are gonna be like these two and then a dark and hollow star, which I love for me. But this one though, I just, this is everything. Awesome. construction upstairs L upstairs sure upstairs again look at Nalago <laughs> literally said nope. I have been awake for a while. It is currently 10.06 a.m. I have been awake for three hours. I woke up super early because today is definitely a busy sort of day. I need to edit a few videos. It's basically what I've been doing all week, just like prepping content, getting videos scheduled and whatnot. And so today is going to be one of those days as well during the afternoon. So I made sure to wake up extra early so that I could get some reading in because I will start like filming, editing at around like half past noon or like 1 p.m. or something. I have time to read. I am dedicating again my entire morning to that. I did finish The Box in the Woods and you guys, this was definitely a five out of five stars. Like I just don't know how else to say that this book is freaking great. I absolutely loved all of the little, I guess, similarities between this and I Know What You Did Last Summer because the similarities are definitely here. Even in the way that the book starts where they're in like a campfire and they're like telling the story and you know that that's leading up to some sort of murder, like slasher moment. And even the repetition with the rules of three, it was so similar to what Sarah Michelle Gellar was doing in I Know What You Did Last Summer when she was telling the story and she was like, drip, drip, drip. It was the same thing in this book and it was a constant throughout the book. Like rule of three is just, it worked so well for this story. Happy to report that David is also not a big part of the story. Like he is in the last 180 pages, but for the other 200, he's barely there for those of you who are like me and you're not David lovers. I didn't mind David in this book as much as I did in the other ones because David in those last two books was just like, 
not it. But in this one, I really didn't mind him that much. I still do stand by the fact that I feel more chemistry with Stevie and Nate, and it bothers me that they never even were a possibility to be together, which I mean, I get, like, you have to, you know, you need platonic friends and everything, but I just kind of wish that Nate would have been an option because, like, the amount of times that Stevie just says, like, I love you, like, you know, I love you. I wish she truly did love him. You know what I mean? But anywho, this book was truly great. The twist? The twist. It's like not even something that you can predict to that extent because I definitely had a suspicion as to who it was going to be. I just didn't expect or even think, it didn't even cross my mind for it to go that route. So I really enjoyed the twist in this and how everything was explained. Like there wasn't any loose ends to this. Literally everything was explained in this book and I absolutely love that. It definitely is like self-contained to this story. I just wish there were like 10 more books to this series. Like this definitely has the potential to be like from now on, like little installments of like Stevie going on different cases. But now I am going to go ahead and read the next thing. And it's actually not Yolk yet, even though I do have it over there. And I am going to start it in a little bit, but I am going to be reading Blood on the Tracks Volume 2 because actually Brandy, shout out to you. One of my subscribers and Patreons, Brandy, sent this over to me and I just really want to read this so I am just gonna squeeze this in this morning and see where the story continues because volume one was freaking crazy so this is a horror manga like horror thriller manga about what a mother is willing to do to protect her child, her son. And it's crazy, like she will really do anything to protect her son. So I really want to read this. I also need to get breakfast sorted, so I will do that in a minute. I'll update you guys as I go, as per usual. And absolutely after this, I am going into Yolk, which again, right there. And I'm gonna be matching with Yolk today.
Well, hello there, my lovely people. It is time to give you guys an update. Yes, I'm wearing the same shirt as the intro. Just wanted to be comfy today because it's just been a sprinting day. Forgot to update you guys when I finished Blood on the Tracks Volume 2. It's not even, is it out here? I think I took it to my bedroom. Yes, I did. Ooh. Didn't love it as much as volume one primarily because like nothing really happened Like I just you can tell that the mom is out of her, you know Fuera de sus cabales like we say in Spanish She is going through something because it's not normal behavior But I really just like like the thrillery psychological vibes of it because it really does mess you up Like there was one full panel that I I, I wouldn't even show that to you guys if I was if I had it with me because it's a spoiler But it really was crazy like I was really reading that like what the heck but I ended up giving it three stars because it was like okay it wasn't like the moment and I did start Yolk I just don't have many updates on this because I only read 12 pages and I th I'm thinking of like restarting the book when I'm actually paying attention and I'm thinking of doing that tomorrow because I am wrapping up this vlog tomorrow since it's Monday and it's been like a full week and I usually don't work on Mondays so I have the confidence that I can get through a good chunk of Yolk tomorrow and I was actually planning planning on reading that today, but ended up focusing on a dark and hollow star. I didn't even show you guys the cover. Dark and hollow star for sprints today. And I am really enjoying this. I feel like there was a period of time where I first picked it up during sprints. I won't say completely, but I kind of like lost the interest to pick the book up. Like it was on my bookshelves and I was really enjoying it for like the first hundred pages. There was a lot of world building and a lot of like character, you know, introductions. There was just like a lot going on and I liked being introduced to the world but then I put it down and I read like a million books in between and I didn't pick it back up and today I was determined to at the very least get a good chunk of it done and I did read 160 pages which was really good but I had to switch to the audiobook for it I did have to switch to that if not I wouldn't have been able to get as much done as I have so it's right here I'm really glad that I made that decision it has a full cast of characters and it's like super immersive the narrators are really freaking great so so I'm having a great time with the audiobook. It really did make my experience go by a little bit more seamlessly than if I wouldn't be listening to the audiobook. So that part of it was really, really nice. The comedy in this book is really good. Like Nausicaa has some really great moments in this book. So I am really enjoying this now after starting the audiobook. And there is a lot of annotations happening on my copy, mostly world building like it's mostly green it's honestly unreal how much world building is happening in this book and it's honestly a little bit hard to retain all of it because it does feel a little bit info dumpy but i am just having a good time with the characters more so than like the actual plot because a lot of it it's just like what's happening because there's just so much being introduced and i thought it was being done that way because this is a standalone but it's not so i'm just like a little bit confused just a tiny bit i am hoping to finish this either today or tomorrow as well so i think a dark and hollow star and yolk are going to be my priority for the next 24 hours because i really do want to get good progress and finish at, if not both then at least one of the books so there is that it is time for me to also cook because i have been sprinting basically all day so i will go make myself some food probably will watch some heroes with my brother because we've just been binge watching the show and it's been a great time also so it didn't show you guys the final result for my nails. This is what they look like. I love them. I didn't think I would love them as much as I do, but it is literally the moment. So hello, love my nails, can't stop staring at them. And yeah, I also took some bookstagram pictures this morning, which was great. Anywho, let me go make some food. Let me go attend to these dogs because they are literally shaking on their boots.
Well, hello there everyone! I am here to update you guys on how my reading has been going and to also wrap up this vlog because I am about to go to bed. Quite literally, I am hecka tired. So I'm trying to keep the energy levels up, okay? I did finish a book and I made progress on another book and I am excited about the both of them. So let me just update you guys real quick. I'm literally going out of the frame. I finished A Dark and Hollow Star. Oh my god. So many thoughts going on my head. Going on my head, going in my head, going in my brain. This book is great as a first in a series. I think it's one of the few first book in series that have made me really engaged and excited about what is happening in this installment, but not necessarily what is to follow, although it did give me that feeling too. The characters in this, level A, literally top tier. Nausicaa is one of my favorite characters. It reminded me so much of Catherine Pierce, but like that banter. She's like, yeah, well, well, I killed some people, what about it? And I love that for her. She's like, she owns up to crap and like she doesn't care about anybody. Arlo, also love her confused girl. <laughs> She has no idea as to what's happening half the time. Neither does Nasakea, to be honest, but love them both. I will say where the book kind of went a little bit astray for me was with the world building. Not to say that the world building wasn't good because it was. There was just so much of it. There was just so much to keep up with that I don't know if I retained half the info in this book. But beside that, the book was really solid, honestly. When I finished this book, I was like, is it a 3.5? Is it a 4? Like, where do I lean? What do I think? And honestly, I feel like the more that I think about this book, the more tidbits I remember and the more I appreciate it for what it did. I feel like the reason why I appreciate this book more than anything else, I mean beside what I already mentioned, is the fact that it managed to grab one of the few things that I am the most fascinated by and use that for the twist, which I had never seen done before. And I can't say what it is because it's the twist, but the fact that Ashley Shuttleworth grabbed that and then literally subverted all of the lore with the Philosopher's Stone. Put that in there, I'm just like, damn. I don't know why it's just genius to me and I found it so cool, so fascinating, never saw it coming, never would have seen it coming. I just it was really great in the way that it was executed. I did restart Yolk. I did tell you guys I was like 12 pages in. And I restarted this because when I first started this, I had just finished The Box in the Woods. And I was just so hung up on The Box in the Woods that I couldn't concentrate on this. I could not put my mind to this. Did not retain a single thing about what I read. I picked it up with the audiobook and I instantly teared up. Mary H.K. Choi, I've never read her before. That little letter at the beginning of the book, how do I explain to you guys that I got emotional from a freaking dedication? I am only... 42 pages in. I absolutely love this. I do have to say though, if you are thinking about going into Yolk, if you have it on your radar, there are content slash trigger warnings for this book. Body dysmorphia and bulimia and eating disorders. Just be aware of those before you actually get into this book. And the way that Mary H.K. Choi has approached this book, not only first of all is it very personal for her, but also it feels very therapeutic to read. And I say this because when I usually read about this type of stuff, I either think, damn, this was really misrepresented or it was very underdeveloped and the way that I feel going into this book is that it's very therapeutic to read about. It is very therapeutic to in a way read about Jane's inner struggle and inner conflict and her inner hurt and kind of relinquish my own in a way because there is a lot of things about Jane that I can't relate to and just saying I see you, I recognize you, I acknowledge you but I also let you go. But also it's very sad to read about Jane and June's relationship and you barely know them honestly at the start of the book but when you see them interact for the first time it's like you're heartbroken at the fact that these sisters who clearly used to be close at one point have grown so estranged from each other and it's just again it's so heartbreaking right off the bat I'm just like oh no what happened to you guys and I again picked up the audiobook for this and I do have to commend the narrator because she is doing a freaking fantastic job at narrating this story so I don't think that there's any more to update you guys with I think this was a really productive week in terms of I scheduled and pre-planned a bunch of content and I read two books and a manga, started another book that so far feels very great and yeah I'd call that an absolute win and I am gonna start a new vlog tomorrow so I am excited about that but yes that is it for today you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you've read any of these books, what have you thought about them. If you're looking forward to any of these books also let me know and also let me know what you have been reading for the past 
last week. I always love to chat with you guys in the comment section. And if you reach the end of the video, let's leave some star emojis down below for your dark and hollow star. So all the stars that you want, any and all stars that you want. And don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already for more bookish content. I'm constantly uploading videos sure you don't want to miss. And if you want more exclusive content, early access to videos, exclusive live streams, exclusive videos, buddy reads, book clubs, a Discord server, a podcast, and literally anything in between, I do have a Patreon. We call ourselves the Citadel, and that is always linked down below alongside all of my social medias. And yeah, I love you guys so much, and I shall see you on the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>